Good morning, everyone. It's Jennifer Nassi with Learning Leaf LLC, and welcome to video six of my 30 videos in 30 days series. So we've been talking about some inflammation driving foods, and before we move on to the uh, ones that are more anti-inflammatory, there's one more thing that I want to address quickly, and this is actually a beverage, and it is alcohol. So yes, there are reports about the benefits of drinking red wine, but I want to speak specifically to folks with chronic health issues. You know how we talked about keeping our blood sugar stable is important to regulating that inflammatory process. And the trouble with alcohol is that alcohol is absorbed directly through our stomach. So it doesn't even have to go through our digestive process very far. It, it gets right absorbed out of the stomach into our bloodstream and therefore can send our blood sugar into utter turmoil. And so, you know, really that is something that I ask you to consider when you are thinking about whether you really want that cocktail or that beer or that glass of wine. Know how that is impacting your body. So, now I did promise we were going to start talking about some anti-inflammatory foods. And in the last uh, couple of videos, I mentioned how processed foods and things like that can drive inflammation, refined foods, and how we should be eating more whole foods. So what does that look like? Today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about whole grains. And if you look under the Learning Leaf channel, there are actually two other videos that are just dedicated to whole grains. Because as you can imagine, I've got plenty I can say about that too. But what I'm gonna keep it to today is that when I say whole grains, I'm not talking about whole wheat bread. I am talking about little grains that look pretty close to what they looked like when they were harvested. These are actually teff grains. Um, teff is wonderful. It's uh, very commonly used in Ethiopia uh, and it makes a great porridge. You can even make pudding with it. Um, believe me, when you start expanding your horizons to all these different whole grains, a whole new culinary world will open up to you. So some of my favorites include teff, as I mentioned, uh, millet is wonderful. It is not just for birds, trust me. Uh, I love having millet with some scrambled eggs and veggies on top. That is fantastic. Quinoa, some of you have probably heard of before. Uh, you can do some wonderful cold salads with it. You can use it to replace rice in recipes. Um, it's really quite versatile. Uh, other ones include steel cut oatmeal. Um, I throw that in a rice cooker the night before. I have a delay timer on my rice cooker, which is a very worthy investment, believe me. I think it set me back about $28, $29. And now I can set it up in the evening, set the timer, and it's ready to go in the morning. I don't even have to worry about breakfast. Um, so there are lots of different kinds of grains you can try. Amaranth is another one um, that I mentioned we have for breakfast sometimes. It makes a nice porridge. So get out there and start exploring. Expand your world around whole grains. Whole grains, um, when you think about brown rice, most of you have, have tried brown rice at some point. So the difference between brown rice and white rice is that white rice has had the outer hull stripped off. Well, the outer hull is where the vitamins are, the minerals are, the fiber is hanging out there, the healthy oils that we need. So when you strip that off, all you're left with is that starchy middle. That starchy middle is meant to be ra um, for the plant to really fuel its growth process. It's, it's pure energy, which in our bodies really equates to almost pure sugar. That's how it acts in our bodies. So when you can have it where the grain is still intact, it's all that other stuff. First of all, our body needs the vitamins and the minerals and the fiber and those healthy oils. Um, but also our digestive system has to work through that outer, outer hull then. So it takes our system longer to break it down, break it all apart, get the nutrients we need, and therefore that leads to a much more slow, steady rise in blood sugar and avoids that drop off at the end, right? It's just a much more steady, stable way to fuel our bodies. So that is something that I encourage you to explore with. One tip you want to know about grains, and you'll hear more about this if you watch those other two videos of mine, because then I have time to go into it a bit further, is that some of them can be uh, coated in a substance that really is there to protect the seed, and it makes it harder for our system to digest. So when you hear people talk about soaking grains, that's why. It breaks down that inhibitor coating, 
and and that way it's much easier on your system so again check out those two videos if you want to learn a little bit more about that and about other ways that you can incorporate them into your lives but otherwise have fun exploring see where you can start working those whole grains into your diet add some more variety into your diet and let me know how it goes for you I will see you back here tomorrow.